Hey guys, it's Sophie and today I am going to be talking about my college entrance tests experience. So to give a little context, I just graduated from senior high under the ABM strand and I will be going to the Ateneo de Manila University in August. I took four college entrance tests, namely Ateneo, La Salle, UP, and Enderon. And I passed three out of four of those. I did not pass UP. But I'm gonna explain more later. Um, I always knew that I wanted to go to Ateneo. A good majority of my relatives graduated from there and I guess it was just a given that I was gonna study there as well. And so yeah, my entire like stay in high school, I worked towards getting the grades that I needed and the credentials that I needed in order to pass. So I tried my very best to get a lot of A's. I joined a lot of committees and headed many projects and was a leader and I also was part of a sport-ish sort of. So I guess if you're starting out high school, like my little sister Maria, if you're watching, better listen to this. I think that it's important to keep in mind that whatever you're doing right now, it may not seem like it, but it will definitely affect your standing or your rank when the time comes, like application season. So I actually started reviewing for the set so the summer Bubba, hi! I actually started reviewing for the sets the summer after grade 9. My mom enrolled me in like review classes, which may sound really early, but I don't know. <laughs> That's what happened to me. So yeah, the summer after grade 9, I went to review class. The summer after grade 10. And then the summer after grade 11, which is usually when everybody else starts going to review centers or hiring tutors, blah blah blah. My experience going to a review center it was pretty fun, like I met a lot of people, but then that's honestly just it. I could have studied for the sets on my own, if I'm going to be honest. But then again, if you consider going to review center, there's still a lot of benefits. Like number one, they give you their own review material. So like I went to Mentors Plus and they gave me like this big binder with everything that you need to know about the sets. I also went to LSC and they give books per subject. So I found those extremely helpful, especially because I self-studied after review class. Another benefit would be like the little tips and tricks that the teachers would give in order for you to answer math or science questions really fast or you know, things like that. Other than that, I probably could have done it on my own. So if you're looking into going to a review center, make sure you go to one that's right for you because all review centers are different. They have a different way of teaching their students. For example, LSE gave more lectures while Mentors Plus gave a lot of practice tests which are really really important. Whether or not you self-study or go to a review center or hire a tutor, you have to practice. So once senior year started, the problem, well not really problem, the burden <laughs> that fell into my hands was to balance everything from being a regular student who had to submit requirements to my extracurriculars like in sports or even my YouTube channel also being class president and also study for sets that was a really hard time for me. This period of my life is where I learned how to balance everything and also not die. Yeah, so the weeks went on, the school year went on, and we had this like university fair or something where different schools would come to my school and they promoted their school. And that's when I heard about Enderon. And they talked about the school, it really fascinated me. And eventually they said that if we took the entrance test that weekend, that same weekend, then they would waive off any entrance fees and it would be really easy for us to apply. So basically I applied to Enderon extremely last minute. I I had to write an essay in like two days and then also like fill out my application form. It was relatively easy to get through that. Come the test day, I didn't know what the coverage of the exam was. But once I took the test, it was really easy guys. I think it's like the easiest exam ever. <laughs> there was only math, English, and an essay. For the math part, you can use your calculator. English was relatively fine. I don't know, it was a little hard. And then for the essay part, it was different per person. Like they basically just asked the question and then you had to answer it. <laughs> it was easy. So yeah, that happened in the morning and then they served like a three or four course meal for lunch. And then in the afternoon, they held the interviews. The lady who interviewed me basically just had the conversation. She was so nice, she was so loving and she was so warm. I think I teared up while talking to her because we just ended up having a full-blown conversation about our lives and yeah, it 
was a fun time, okay? I didn't feel like I was applying to go to college. <laughs> I got my results two weeks after and they just called me and said I passed. And it was really nice because I think around that period, it was close to the asset and I felt really bad about myself. Like I felt underprepared. And after that call, I felt so much better about myself and I felt ready to attack the asset. The next exam that I took was the asset and before that I am going to talk about my application experience. So the application forms came out and out of all the application forms, the asset gave me the most headaches. I don't know how to explain it. It's just if you go through it, you'd know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're the only school that asked for an essay and the, the application forms were just... It was a lot, okay? It was a lot. So my asset application essay, just so you guys know and maybe you guys can take inspiration from it was sort of like this failure turned success story. <laughs> it was pretty basic but then at the time that was like the best way I could sell myself to Ateneo. I think my starting sentence was like, I failed the Ateneo senior high entrance exam. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. I think. Don't quote me on that. It sounds so stupid and okay. But it got me in. It got me in. So yeah, I failed it and then after that I felt really depressed but then I was like, why am I just feeling sad? Why don't I just work my butt off in order to show Ateneo that they made the wrong decision? So I got my grades up really high. It was my academic peak. Then I joined like a lot of conferences, both international and locally. Yeah, I just basically showed them that you made the wrong decision. So I gave them a reason to accept me for college. Okay, that's basically it. So fast forward to uh, the week before the asset. I think that week was finals and it really kicked my butt because I had to study for finals and also study for the asset. So I don't know how I was able to get through that. My anxiety was as high as ever. I was crying every single day. So if you experience that, that's totally normal. Once I started answering the test, I was like, Oh crap, I'm taking the asset. I'm taking an exam that determined my future. And then I freaked out a little and then I calmed down after and then answered the rest of the test. It was such a blur. I don't really remember much except thinking to myself, wow, if I screw up, this is something that's gonna mess up my entire life. If you wanna know the coverage for the asset, I can't tell you exactly what to study because I don't remember. Even for like the other entrance exams, I don't exactly remember. Instead, I'm gonna give you like really vague subjects like math what exactly in math I don't know just study everything <laughs> the asset had math English logical and abstract reasoning there was this like speed section there's like 40 questions that you have to answer in like five to eight minutes which sounds ridiculous I know but they're basically just trying to test your accuracy so you're not really required to finish it I mean that's what you think you should do but then you're not really required to okay after the asset did I feel really really confident no did i feel relieved that it was over yes a few weeks later i took the dcat and i don't know nothing like stands out from my experience with the dcat application for la salle was online which is really great the coverage of the dcat was math english science and stat statistics i did not know <laughs> there was statistics until the day before so you bet i crash course statistics until I was outside La Salle. Like I was watching the videos and trying to absorb everything and I was able to answer like a couple of questions in the statistics part so good job. The exam was fine. Like if you can survive the asset, you can survive the DCAT. If you want to know more about that specific week or that specific day because there was this really funny thing that happened to me during the DCAT and I'm not gonna talk about it now because I already talked about it in my DCAT video. So go watch that. Now I'm going to talk about the OPCAT which was the last exam that I took but it was actually supposed to be my first but then it got cancelled because the weather was bad and it was also my last option out of the four which other people might find offensive like I know there are some diehard UP fans out there but I want to be a business major and uh, out of all the options La Salle and Ateneo specifically had better like programs and courses to offer than UP please don't kill me it's just my personal opinion okay 
didn't want to take the OCAT in the first place, my mom kind of forced me and said that if you get in, then great for you because it's like something you can wear. Like I passed the OCAT. Ha ha ha. Like I said a while ago, the OCAT was the last exam that I took. And in between the DCAT and the OCAT, I just didn't study anymore. Like I didn't even care. So going into the OCAT, I basically forgot everything that I learned. And during the actual test, I just didn't even try. Like they don't give you a break during the OCAT, but you can eat snacks while taking it. And you have to be very smart about when you take your snacks. I decided to eat my snacks during the last leg of the exam which is the reading comprehension part and that reading comprehension part killed everyone because you're so focused on answering right because it's right minus wrong well it's right minus one fourth wrong and they punch you in the gut because they put the reading comprehension last so you have to have enough energy to last you through that and I didn't have enough energy anymore so you can just imagine me like reading these one page, one page and a half reading materials in both Filipino and English and eating my snacks. I was just like flipping through them like a magazine and then shading <laughs> whatever letter. I know some people are probably screaming at me right now. But I just didn't care anymore, you know? So yeah, that was... That's what happened. So now all the sets are done. I am trying to focus on school, but inside I'm actually dying to know the results for each of the exams that I took. The results didn't come until January and I think April for the upcat, but I may be mistaken. So I found out about the asset first. I remember the exact date because they made such a big deal out of it. It was so funny. January 11 at 11 11 a.m. Their announcement post was so funny it looked like a prom teaser video if you know what i mean and what was extremely nerve-wracking was that on that day friday january 11 we had finals and we didn't get off until 11 30 which is a few minutes after results would have been released so my entire grade like made this joke that starting 11 5 everyone will like go to the bathroom and open the results in the bathroom because we couldn't use our phones in class. Did some people do that? Yes. In fact, once it was 11.30 and we passed all our papers and the exam was done, some people started checking online. I didn't want to open it in the classroom because what if I didn't pass? Then I would like cry in front of everyone and I wouldn't have been able to film my reaction. So I covered my ears until I got to the car and then I went home and opened my results at 11.40 and I passed. <laughs> If you watch that video of mine, you'd hear like this text notification that came up the minute that I found out because my cousin also texted me once the page loaded and she said congratulations and I kind of saw that text first and then I saw the congratulations so that's that's kind of how I knew. I find myself to this day like re-watching that video just to just to feel something. <laughs> Anyways, I found out about the Saturday after. The results had come out at 12 midnight, but then I just didn't bother to check anymore because I think the website was lagging. So I checked it when I woke up and I passed also. It was it was cool. Like I passed my dream school, so the other results didn't really matter much anymore. Fast forward to uh, April 1, I think. That's when UP results came out, which is really funny because April 1, April Fool's, haha, <laughs> big joke. To be honest, I already had a feeling that I didn't pass. What I did was like find my friends' names first. Especially my friends who like really wanted to get in and then I texted them like congratulations blah 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 And eventually I tried finding my name, didn't find it, it was okay, my mind was already set on Ateneo So yeah, that's my upcut rejection If you're taking the sets this year or in the next coming years, all I can say is good luck It will really feel like you're underprepared and you're gonna be so extremely anxious about it Especially if it's your dream school, but it's something that I was able to go through and that means you can go through it as well. If you have any other questions that you want to ask me, feel free to comment them down below. I will try to answer as many of them as possible. But please do not ask me the coverage because I really can't give that, okay? I'll see you guys real soon with another video and goodbye. Cheers. <laughs>